All right, so we're online. This is actually from the 17th. And um, what day was that? Tuesday or whatever it was. <clears throat> so I think this was still from the college. And so I repeated this slide so that we can see this, so we can see the uh, addressing. We talked about endpoints, access in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Talked a little bit about the OSI model. Okay, so let's move ahead. Now this is the 24th, Net 609 Network Security online. So. You have to go back and watch the um, other whiteboard review that would have the, um, the 19th or whatever it is last Thursday. So this is um, this is Tuesday, and so this is week two of online. We covered some terms. We covered authentication. You know this this should be all on video. The so authentication, who can access, you know, is the information accurate, and are we being confidential? And of course, why do we have to do that? Well, we have to make information available. We talked a little bit about data, and I talked about data that's uh, stored, data in transit, and data being processed. We're mostly interested in transit, it's just moving because this is going to lead up to us doing some work with VPNs starting Thursday and going on into next week. Personal information, personal identification information. So I talked a little bit about classifying data, you know, how, how the data is used and who should have access to what data. We talked a little bit about that, like social security numbers or whatever, but data can be classified, which would determine you know, what we need to do to protect it, right? Of course, you'd say we always need to protect the, in, the, the integrity of the data, but who can see what, you know, different levels of that, okay? We define the word cipher, that a cipher is some kind of algorithm that would take plain text and turn it into cipher text. Two different options there, one, one, we can create a hash like we use in passwords, or we can encrypt the data. And so we can encrypt and decrypt. Encrypt and then decrypt. We take plain text and we create ciphertext. Now we talked a little bit about what's an algorithm, so I gave an example. If I had this number and I need to divide it into 15 parts, you can do a little mental check, that'd be around two something. Then we have the division algorithm that says make this little symbol, write this number here, here, divide it in, here, make sure you move the decimal point up right away, and then you can go through the process of doing long division. Long division is an algorithm. It always works. If you don't make an arithmetic error, it always works. Then a big part of the chapter is cryptography. And uh, cryptology, and we can do cryptography and crypto analysis. This is the idea of converting plain text to cipher text, and this is analyzing that or breaking the key or whatever. And I gave a simple example a cyclic redundancy check. You got a frame come in, the switch decides you're going to send the frame over here, and so it can do a checksum. On that, so it can have an algorithm. Could be as simple as adding up the bits. So it puts a number in here of how many bits it is, sends it to the next device. The next device knows it's using that same test, cyclic redundancy check. So it takes the current bits, adds them up, and then it compares those two numbers. If they match, you'll assume the frame's okay. If they don't match, something wrong with the frame, and you can drop it. Okay, so then, then we got talking a little bit about keys that have to do with our algorithm. Now I better keep moving. Talk about hashing and encryption. Talk about one-way hash, 
Okay, you can use an MD5 hash, and a hash always ends up being a same specific size. We talked about encrypting data. We take plain text, we encrypt it, and then we can decrypt it. Triple DES, um, Advanced Encryption System, SEAL, I can't remember exactly what it all stands for, pretty good privacy, and there's more. So we have different algorithms we can use for encryption, and then we have algorithms we can use for hashing. MD5, we did an example in class, SHA, SHA-256, which is SHA-2, and there's 256, and then there's, you know, more, more complex, more bits used in creating it. This is what we're currently using, SH, SHA-2, typically at 256. This is the next step, but it hasn't been approved by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. <clears throat> so we did two examples on the computer. We did, um, in fact, I think we did maybe all three of these hashing examples. And then I did a pretty good privacy. Now in Linux, it's written GPG. I'm not sure. There's a reason. I don't know why. But it's called pretty good privacy. And so we took that and we did it to a file then I sent that file to a location that was shared and the students could come in and they could use this password or passphrase to look at the file and we looked at the encrypted file two more two more slides two more slides okay we talked about hashing with a key you bring those together and you get a key hash message authentication code which can be used not only for integrity, check in here, but this can also be used for authentication. Be used in both. We will make use of that in VPNs. VPN has a framework, IP security, this framework. Okay. <clears throat> and we talked about a little bit about VPNs. Okay. So text, key, put them together and get this, repeat the process over here, they would reverse the process and compare them, and they're equal or okay, Not the integrity and the authentication. More on that later. Keys and key management. It's a big deal. So we could use this, you know, we could have a file, we could encrypt it, send it over here, use some key to encrypt it, then you'd have to use that same key to decrypt it. So we, get, we did the example, here I was just showing a VPN, we have information here, we want to send it across the internet, we have information over here on the other end. So here I said, okay, I got a message, we want to send it to Kevin in Charles City, we're going to use an unsafe medium like the internet, we can both know, yeah, we're going to use AES. I can have a key. I can get the key to Kevin somehow. I could call him and tell him it, or we could exchange it here while we're at NIAC. And then this would be symmetric communications. Okay, I would encrypt it, send it to him, and he can decrypt it because we both have the same key. Symmetric. One last thing here. When you make a key, like you have a key, the key size, if it's two, the key space would be four. So you can imagine as you increase this, if that's, um, if it's a key, if the key length was uh, six, then two to the six, and then the key space would give us that many combinations. So as we, let me uh, maybe emphasize this. As we increase the key length, we exponentially increase the key space, which makes it harder to check the key. And over here we gave the example. These are considered a shared key environment. One more slide. 
symmetric shared keys. Okay, I give an example of RC4. Can't see that. RC4 might be the encryption method. Asymmetric, like RSA, which we use a lot, um, they have a key pair. You have a public key and a private key. So, in that scenario here, let's. Um, all right, so <clears throat> we talked about asymmetric. We have a public and private key. So let's run through that scenario. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to send a message here. Um, here's my message, a secure message. You need to send it to Charles City to Kevin. How are we going to do that? Well, <clears throat> first of all, if, if I wanted to, we could do it this way. Kevin, let me... Uh, give you this Kevin let's say this is Kevin's public key he could send me his public key and then I could encrypt it and then we send the encrypted message and then when it gets over here since Kevin's the only one that has his private key he could decrypt it and then he'll have the message <clears throat> now if let's look at another scenario here we'll go um, blue how does Kevin know that the message actually came from me? Okay, so here's what I can do. I can create, I can create, I could hash it, I can create a, a digital signature of some sorts. I could hash the information, add some information, and then encrypt it with my private key. Does that make sense? I can encrypt that with my private key. So I'm going to go here. Um, so here's here's my private key. That's Mike. I'll use a box now over that. And so I can encrypt it with my private key and send it over. <clears throat> then I can also send my green here. My uh, it's Mike now again. I could send my public key. So now when he, when Kevin gets this information, he can decrypt it with the public key, okay, and then he can check to make sure, <clears throat> well, it would, it would have to be from me, because only my, because I encrypt it with my private key, it can only be decrypted with his public key. So then he could see the signature. All right, that is, man, that, that's a wrap. Um, we talked a little bit about VPNs and how they work. We talked about what levels of risks people, com companies take and how they manage all this. On Thursday, we will wrap up this and we'll get started on the VPNs the VPN. So this is um, this is module 7 cryptography and then module 8 will be the VPNs. So you can be working through these particular materials. That's it for today. <clears throat>